Close your eyes. Focus on the breath in a way that gives rise to pleasure. Try to appreciate the breath as it's coming in and going out. Some people say they don't get much pleasure out of the breath. Well, one good way to test that is to hold your breath for a while until you can't stand it any longer. Then breathe in. And the parts of the breath that feel really refreshed, okay, focus on those. Because the mind is eager to find pleasure. So you can provide it. It's doing this all the time. We tend to think of ourselves on the receiving end of pleasure and pain. But we're also the producers. It's through our intentions, as the Buddha said, that we, we plant seeds. And then we reap the plants that come from the seeds we planted. Which means if you plant bitter melon, you're going to get a bitter fruit. If you plant grape seeds, you're going to get sweet fruit. Our problem is that we plant bitter things, bitter things, and then we complain when we have to eat bitter things. But you have to look back and see, oh, where was this produced? And even though you can point out that other people have done things wrong, that's a, problems with society, problems with the disease, problems with all kinds of things. But the reason the mind is suffering from these things is because of its own actions, both in the past and in the present. You can't do much about the past, but you can do something about the present. In other words, whatever is produced by your field, you can learn how to make good food out of it. That's a sign of a good cook. So if you don't like your, what you're, you're getting in from the world, ask yourself, well, how can I fix it better? Because everything you experience, so the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind, has to get filtered through your own fabrications, the thoughts that you have, the intentions you have. And so look to those. This is one of the reasons why we meditate. We set one intention in the mind and then try to hold by it. And as you hold to that one intention, you find other intentions coming up and running against it. If you didn't have one clear intention in mind, you just flow from one to the next to the next and not really know where one started, where one ended, where you're going. You end up someplace in Central Asia, wondering how you got there. But if you have a clear intention, you can sense, so this is pushing to the left, this is pushing me to the right, but I, don't want to, I, want, I want to stay on course. It's by keeping your intentions on course that you plant good seeds. We have good seeds, and a good crop results. When you have a good crop, then it's a lot easier to fix good food out of it. The fixing is, of course, what you're doing here in the present moment. And there are a lot of people who have good crops from the past, and they ruin it. You probably have met the cooks who can take good food and then turn it into something miserable. A lot of us have that problem. But the Buddha wants us to teach us how to fix things here in the present moment in such a way that no matter what comes out of the field, we can make good food out of it. We can find happiness however the world may be. So look to your skills right now. How are you breathing? How are you talking to yourself about the breath? What perceptions do you hold in mind? These are your cooking skills. If you do them well, they give rise to well-being. That way you're more and more independent of conditions outside, as the mind becomes more re reliable in how it fixes the present moment. 